Church, April 21st, 2022. We bless the Lord for another day, another opportunity that he has permitted us and allowed us to come together to uh, pray for each other and with each other on today. Uh, the Word of God clearly reminds us to give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy. Thank God for his mercy. His mercy endures forever. We pray again that everyone is doing well on today and that you are having a wonderful Thursday afternoon. Uh, a few announcements that we're getting ready to make before we engage in prayer. There are uh, various individuals who are in need of prayer. They stand in the need of prayer on today. Uh, number one, we want to pray for we receive word um, early part of this week. One of our Bible class visitors and participants there in Alabama. Many of you, most of you may know him, Deacon Eddie McCoy. Deacon Eddie McCoy, he solicits our prayer. He has been ill, been sick the last uh, few weeks, a few months or so. He's not in the hospital, but uh, is dealing with a uh, certain illness, and we want to pray. You know, you don't have to be a part of our church, New Mount Zion Church, to be included or added to the prayer list, but we want to uh, indeed uh, include Deacon Eddie McCoy there in Alabama on our prayer list today. He solicits our prayers, as well as some of our own very own members. We want to pray for Sister Sanji Cooper. I uh, spoke with her on yesterday. Sister Cooper will be admitted into the hospital, if not today. If she's not admitted today, she will be admitted possibly tomorrow. Uh, uh, she will be having or undergoing surgery. So we want to pray for Sister Cooper. Thank God uh, we received word. After the fact, thank God, Sister Brenda Newsom. Uh, she was in the hospital last week, had some procedure or a procedure done, uh, but thank God Sister Brenda Newsom is doing well, no longer in the hospital, so thank God she is out and doing well. Uh, also, uh, there there are some individuals who have experienced bereavement. They have lost loved ones. Pray for Sister Charlotte Cannon. Sister Cannon and her family, they are requesting special prayer uh, for the Knight family as well. Uh, in the death of Brother Bernard Tillis. Brother Bernard Tillis, uh, the son of our former trustee, Earl Knight, and Sister Edna Knight, uh, Brother Bernard Tillis, we want to pray for his family uh, in his passing. Uh, graveside service will be Saturday. Graveside service will be this coming Saturday at 11 a.m. there at Autumn Woods Cemetery. And I believe visitation will be tomorrow, Friday, at West Haven Funeral Home. So we want to pray for the Charlotte, for the Charlotte Cannon and the Knight family in the passing of Brother Bernard Tillis. Uh, that is the son of Brother Earl Knight and Sister Edna Knight. Also, we want to be in prayer for uh, Sister Jackie Williams again. That is the sister of Brother Emerson Williams. Uh, per Sister Carolyn Fleming, thank God for this announcement uh, she uh, would like for the body of Christ to include her niece uh, in prayer. Her name is Gloria McKnight. Gloria, Gloria McKnight, uh, the niece of Sister Carolyn Fleming, she was in the hospital. She may still be in the hospital. I know she had a procedure done on yesterday, and hopefully and prayerfully will be going home today. If she has not been discharged as of yet, she will be discharged today. So we want to pray for Sister Gloria McKnight as well. Continue to keep Brother Ernest Fleming, the brother Deacon Fleming, in our prayer. He's doing better, but still in the need of our prayers, as well as the nephew of the late Deacon Eddie Thompson. Uh, many of you know him, Brother Bernard Thompson. Uh, he is continuing, still battling cancer, doing somewhat better, but he is in the need of our prayers. He solicits our prayers as well. Uh, as well as Sister Lily Studaway. We informed you on last week uh, she was battling or dealing with pneumonia at home. So we want to lift up Sister Lily Studaway uh, as well. Keep her in our prayers. All right, Bible class will resume. We're looking forward to Bible class Monday evening, Monday night, 7 p.m. Uh, we've been dealing with the last few weeks, Genesis chapter 41, and I believe that the Lord says the same. We will wrap up chapter 41. Uh, on Monday night, we'll probably make some progress as well as we look at chapter 42. 
So please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to read the book of Genesis chapter 41, 42. Uh, we just bless the Lord for how well Bible study is going. It does my heart well when you have individuals who reach out to you during the week discussing certain things that they have learned or uh, research or found as it relates to the book of Genesis. This is what it's all about. So please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to read uh, chapter 41 and also chapter 42 in preparation for Bible study on next Monday. What happened to compassion? That is our devotional thought or topic today. What happened to compassion? You know, I, as, as I was reading and studying this topic this morning, it really moved me in my spirit because it really uh, hit me this morning as I read and study, studying how much we have strayed away as a church, as a city, as a country, as a world. To be Christians, it baffles me how far we have strayed away as it relates to showing compassion, Lord have mercy, compassion to other people. So that's our devotional thought today. What happened to compassion? Now, the passage of scripture that we're going to use as a point of reference comes out of the book of Colossians chapter 3. One verse that we're going to look at uh, quickly today, Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 12. Let me read to you what it says. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 says this, Therefore, now it's describing us as Christians. It says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, it lists our attributes next in verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, he tells us to clothe ourselves with compassion, with kindness, with humility, with gentleness and patience. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. What in the world happened to compassion? Now, if you think about this, if you will, real quick, among the aspects central to the Christian faith, I believe is compassion. Because when you read the Word of God, when you read Matthew the book of John, it always mentions numerous times that Jesus was moved with compassion. Lord have mercy. So I believe that one of the central aspects of the Christian faith should be compassion. Because when we show love, when we show concern, and when we care for those who are suffering and misfortunate, we identify Watch this. We identify with Jesus Christ. Because remember, as I stated earlier, Jesus' life on earth was filled with compassion. Think about this. During the time he lived and ministered among us, he consistently devoted his time to those who were hurting and in need. I'm going to say that again. Jesus, during his time on earth, now remember, the church is considered to be the body of Christ. When Christ was on earth in his physical body, the word of God tells us he consistently devoted his time to those who were hurting and in need. He healed diseases. He fed the hungry. He cast out demons. He brought sight to the blind. He even raised the dead. His example reminds us to see and care about the needs of those who are around us. Now, what's amazing is when you read the gospel writing, that Jesus oftentimes shunned religious leaders and made a habit of connecting with people who today you and I would see as homeless and helpless. Now, this is amazing. This shows just how how far we have strayed away from, from showing compassion and mimicking the life of Jesus. Because oftentimes, Jesus shunned away from religious and political leaders, and he made a habit of connecting with people who today we would see as on the fringes of society, those who are homeless and helpless. 
He cared about them. He loved them. And he even met their physical and spiritual needs. So as I wrap this up, perhaps I believe the greatest need for our faith, our neighbors, our nation today, and even some of our churches is compassion. Wow. Because in an increasingly polarized world, we find ourselves separated from one another more than ever before. Wow. So so the church can, this is what the church must do. The church can and must, absolutely must, without a shadow of a doubt, respond to the needs of hurting people with compassion. That's why the book of Colossians, in that one verse that I read to you, the book of Colossians reminds us to be close compassion, kindness, gentleness. So when we see the needs of other people and help to meet them with our resources, without regard to being compensated or other benefits to ourselves, it is then and only then that we reflect the image of Jesus Christ in this world. We also open up avenues to share the gospel with those we are able to serve and be a blessing to. What in the world happens to compassionate people? That, that, that really hit me this morning in my study and in my preparation, and I hope that it convicts uh, some of us, some of you, and changes some of our behaviors to see that it's all about showing compassion to those who are in need. All right, we bless the Lord for that word on today. We're getting ready to pray. We have three individuals who are going to bless us with prayers today. Uh, three of our great deacons. We have Deacon Jared Spive, but we have Deacon Vernell Sanders, and we have thirdly and finally Deacon Willie Bell Scott. So we're going to unmute them at this time. And Deacon Jared Spiva, if you're on the line, Deacon Spiva, Jared, we will uh, begin with you on today. Deacon Jared Spiva, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Thank you so much, okay. Deacon Spiva. Yes, sir. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you. I praise you. Lord, in all you do, I find the strength and courage to go on. Lord, I thank you for the author and finisher of my faith, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for your unconditional and everlasting love. May I grow more and more to be like you. I ask that you continue to guide and teach me in all that I say and do, and that I may do all according to your will. I ask you to continue to pour out your bountiful blessings and mercy on all of us. Almighty God, we praise you for all your gifts to us in creation. We acknowledge the skills with which we have been endowed the materials available for our use, and the opportunities opportunities to meet the need of others. Thank you for your amazing power and work in our lives. Thank you for your goodness and your blessings over us. Thank you that you are able to bring hope even through the toughest of times. Lord, bless those who are sick and bless those who need healing physically and mentally. Lord, continue to bless our young people and help them to do help them to do what is right. We give thanks to you for watching over New Mind Zion's members, families, and the friends. You've been so good, and we acknowledge goodness to we acknowledge the goodness to us. Thank you for redeeming us, and thank you for saving us. Thank you for forgiving us, and thank you for loving us. Lord, help those who are confused and don't know what to do with their lives. Bless them to make the right decisions. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, who came to earth to die for us so that we, so that we might be saved to come and live with you forever. Lord, just bless Pastor Tobias and his family. He has been such an awesome leader, and we are grateful for him. Continue to guide him and do your holy will. We pray for the leadership of Jackson. Lord, guide them to do what is right. I pray that we live our lives in a manner that glorifies you. I just thank you, Father, for your amazing gift of salvation. I pray that those who have not accepted Jesus as their Savior may do so before it's too late. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 
Thank you, Deacon Jarvis. I was so very much. Thank you so much. All right. Deacon Sanders, Deacon Vernell Sanders, if you are there, we yes, are you, you at this moment. Thank you, Deacon Sanders, as you continue in prayer. Good afternoon, Nehemiah Zion. May we pray? Dear God, we're thankful that you know our hearts. You hear our prayers, and you care about all that concerns us. Thank you that you understand these burdens we carry and how we want more than anything to see our loved ones come to you. Help us to remember that you love them more than we ever could and that you desire to extend your great love and forgiveness to the deepest part of their soul. We are forever grateful for you and your healing power for the gift of mercy and your message of hope. Thank you, Lord, that nothing is too difficult for you. Thank you that your power is unlimited and you came to set the captives free. Thank you that you wait arms open for the prodigal son to return, that you look for his arrival to lavishly celebrate that he's come home. We praise you for you are Redeemer and Rescuer, Savior and Lord. We know and believe that there is no pit so deep that your love can't reach us still. We understand that your mercies are new every morning and your faithfulness is great. Dear God, we ask that you would stop every plan of the enemy over those we love as we bring them before you right now. We pray that you demise the schemes, that your plans for good, for a future and hope, will prevail. Please open up blind eyes that they might see your truth. We believe in you to rescue these walking in darkness and to help the deep wounds of all who have been hurt. We pray for a miraculous intervention of your spirit to draw them to yourself, to work strongly on behalf of our loved ones who are lost and wandering. For you came with good news to heal the brokenhearted, to, to proclaim freedom for captives and release for the prisoners. Though we deserve penalty for our wrong, you stood in our place and took the blows on our behalf. You chose to die so that we can live forever and we could be free. Lord, forgive our unbelief. Please forgive the times we have doubted that you could ever change a distant heart. Forgive our hard-heartedness, our weariness, our forgetfulness, pray continuously. And thank you, God that you never give up on us. Remind us again of how you've changed our own hearts, how your miracle of life and hope has sprung up deep within our souls. We love you, Lord. We need you today and every day. We thank you that you hear our prayers and believe that you are at work even now, powerfully faithfully, and miraculously doing what only you can do. Mm. We also pray, God, for Deacon Eddie McCoy, Sister Sonia Cooper, Sister Brenda Newsom, Sister Cannon, Brother Tillis, Sister Williams, Sister McKnight, Brother Fleming, Brother Thompson, Sister Studaway, we also pray for our congregation, our church, and we just thank you, God, for all you do. We pray for our lovely pastor and his wife and his family, God. Thank you again for the most wonderful gift of our Savior, God with us. Thank you for your great goodness and love. These things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. 
Thank you, Deacon Sanders, as well. Uh, Deacon Willie Bell Scott, uh, if you're on the line, Deacon Scott, we yield to you at this moment for our third prayer. Deacon Scott, are you there? I am here, Pastor. Thank you so much. Let us go to God in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Merciful God, we come as empty pitchers before a full fountain. Knowing that you've been so good to us, Master, you kept us all night long while we slumbered and slept. We've been through many things, but you've been right there with us, Lord, and we are so grateful. We're grateful for your mercy. We're grateful for your teaching. We're grateful for your healing power. We thank you, Lord, because you sent your darling son, Jesus, here to die in atonement for our sins. We're overjoyed about that. We celebrated that last Sunday, and it was just awesome. We thank you, God, for all that you have done. We ask that you bless our pastor in his quest to save these souls. Those who don't know you in the pardon of us of their sins, God, please, sir, open their eyes, open their ears, open their understanding so that they can see, hear, and tell others of the glorious name of Jesus, the God that we serve. We ask you, Pastor, to take care of our children in the streets when they're going to school, take care of them. When they're coming home from school, take care of them. When they're going to and fro, some going to church, some going to ball games, or whatever, Lord, take care of our children. Our children are 16 and 17 years old, and God knows what they are going through, what they're thinking. But you know, you know all about it. You've been so good to us. You kept us when we couldn't even keep ourselves. We ask, Master, that you bless our church, bless our church family. Keep us together. Bless those that are sick. Bless those that are downcast, the bereaved, those who have lost loved ones. Some of us have lost our mothers. Some of us our brothers. But God, you know that you have, we know that you have everything in your hand. We're asking that you bless, that you shower down on us blessings of healing, blessings of praise. God, we give you all the glory and all the praise for all that you've done. You didn't have to do it, Master, but you did. And we're so grateful. We ask that you bless our church family again. Keep us close, so close that one can't fall upon us. We ask that you open up our understanding when we go in Bible class so that we will know what you want us to know. And we thank you for our leader. We thank you for Reverend Tobias and his family. Please uh, bless them, continue to take care of them, continue to lead him and guide him because he's listening and he does just what you said, I believe. Please uh, have mercy upon us right here, right now. I pray for all of the people that's in the war. Those who, are, who don't know what they're doing, taking lives 
for the fun of it. It's not like that. And you won't accept it. I know you won't. But I'm asking you to have mercy upon those people. Take care of them. And lead them and guide them in Jesus' name. Bless us in all that we do and all that we say for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 As we continue in prayer on today, God our Father, we thank you for being a God who has shown compassion to us. God, we know that you've shown compassion to us because you gave us your son who you sent your son to be an example for us, not only an example for us, but to die for our sins and be raised from the dead so that we can experience eternal life. God, we thank you for showing compassion on us while we were in our sin. Bible says that you loved us so much that Christ died for us. That is that is a great sign of compassion, meeting the needs of other people. So God is our prayer on today. We thank you for the devotional thought. It is our prayer on today, God, that you will open our eyes to the needs of those around us who have needs that we can meet. God, you have blessed us so much that we can definitely meet the needs of other people. And I pray, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will continue to open up our eyes so that we can meet the needs of those who are around us so that they can ultimately see you in us. God, we pray that you fill us with compassion for their situation. And as we serve them, God, we pray that you will continue to give us opportunities to share with you, share with them. Jesus Christ, our Lord, because we realize and recognize, God, that before you fed the multitude of people, before you ministered to them spiritually, you met their needs physically so that they could have an open heart and mind to hear those spiritual blessings. So, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would do just that. Give us more and more and more of a spirit of compassion to meet the needs of other people. God, you heard the names of those who have been called out, God, before I pray for myself, before I pray for others, God, who, 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 who may not be sick. We lift up those who are sick right now. You know who they are, God, because we realize and recognize that our day is coming when we too will get sick, and we would need others to pray for us. So, God, we pray for those who are sick, those who are hurting, those who are in the hospital, those who are bereaved. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would comfort them even right now. God, we believe that all of the miracles were not just uh, listed and labeled in the Bible day, but we believe that you are still working and performing miracles right now. And that's what we ask you on today, God. We ask you to manifest and to unleash your Holy Spirit in an unusual and an unfamiliar way to your people, Father God, so that they can see you. See and feel your presence in their lives. Heal those who are sick. God, I rebuke cancer. I pray, God, that those who are battling cancer, that upon their next visit to the doctor, even the doctor is confused at how we're doing. Not because of our doing, but it's all because of the power. And sins, God, we pray a track and go out and strengthen somebody else. Because we realize and recognize that some of the things you allow us to go through is not about us, but it's all about having a testimony to share with others that you still They too believe in the power of prayer. Their belief because of their prayer, their prayers and their faith. I pray blessings upon them. I pray strength upon them, God. I pray uh, that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour them out blessings. So much so 
that there's not enough room to receive them, God. God, even those who are not members of our church, we lift them as well. Those who have job interviews, God, we're not praying selfish prayer. We want to see the body of Christ blessed because when one individual is blessed, God, it reminds us that you are in the blessing business. Thank you for our wonderful church, all that is being done, all that is being said, God. Thank you for what you're getting ready to do, and I pray, God, that you will continue to order our steps. We are not wise enough. We're not smart enough. We don't know enough. But we do have a desire to walk in your will and obey your word. So, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you continue to bless this church like never before. Allow our light to continue to shine so that someone can see and hear us worshiping and praising the one true and living God. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen again. Thank you all so much again for taking the time on this Thursday uh, at noon. It's about 12.30 now. Thank you so much for uh, devoting these 30 minutes to prayer. And I pray that you have a blessed rest of the week. Please, ma'am, please, sir, inform someone. This coming Sunday, invite someone. It's a great lesson. I know I say that all the time, but every lesson is a great lesson. But this is a really, really, really good lesson this coming Sunday that we're going to be studying. Until Sunday morning at 9, I pray that the grace of God be with each of you and that you have a blessed rest of the day. Have a great day. Bye-bye.